Just about ready to get underway here in the second half. Washington State holds a 25-23 halftime lead over California. With Braulio Perez, I'm Riley Corcoran. A little bit different of a first half than we expected, Brawl. Both teams struggled shooting, both shooting 33% in the first half. California, with Alan Crabb being out, Jorge Gutierrez we thought could step up. He's 0 for 8 shooting, but Harper Camp has been there with six points and seven rebounds. You know, he has really been a dominant force, and you look at him here, getting D'Enzo Castro to guess the wrong way, goes up strong for the bucket. And you know, he has really been, you know, the main consistency for the California Golden Bears. But you're right, Gutierrez, 0 of 8 from the floor. I did not see that happening. Good defense by Marcus Capers and Clay Thompson, kind of a combination of those two guarding him to start. Now for Washington State offensively, they have the lead, but barely. A. Blodwick has struggled. He's 0 for 4 shooting. Faisal Aiden, 2 for 8 in the first half, but Clay Thompson with 8 points. D'Angelo Castro with 6. They've led the way offensively for Washington State. You know, Thompson's been playing well. Castro's been playing well, as you see here, trying to get some position down in the low post. A. Blodwick finds his big man. One dribble, two dribble. Goes up strong with the right-handed hook. And, you know, that's really been something he's improved on this season. Really been consistent. And you know, on the other hand, here's Thompson trying to find somebody outside, knocks down the 14 foot jumper. And you know, combine those two, really keeping the Cougars in this one so far. You mentioned Faisal Aiden, he's been struggling. Two of eight from the floor. It really appeared like he was not gonna be able to hit a three pointer the whole night the way he was shooting. Towards the end, knock down a couple of shots. Maybe it'll boost his confidence here in the second half. We'll see if it does. Clay Thompson averaging 21 points per game, trying to get to a season average. He's at eight right now. Washington State, though, so from beyond the arc, three for 16 shooting. That has to improve. It was something we saw against Stanford as well. That has to improve. They're going to win. You know, there's something about this team. Either they're hot or they're just ice, ice cold. There's no in-between for these Cougars. Against the Huskies, I mentioned before, they played great from the outside, but then tonight they've really been struggling. They really have, so we'll see what lineup each coach goes with, what worked the best in the first half. Some more halftime statistics for you. California 0 for 3 from the free throw line. Washington State 4 for 6. Turnovers 10 by Cal, 9 by Washington State. So very sloppy on both ends. Just in contrast, Washington State only averages 13 turnovers a game. California averages 14. So they're both well on their way to going over that. Just a very, the, the stats coming into this one, Braulio, told us it was going to be a close game. So really shouldn't be surprised if the two-point edge at halftime, the Cougars shoot 47% from the floor. Cal shoots 45%. WSU shoots 36% from three. They're well under that tonight. Cal shoots 35%. So everything's just very close and just two teams trying to battle it out and go ahead of the clutter in the Pac-10. You know, I think the only big surprise really is that the score's 25 to 23. Very low scoring affair for both of these squads. See what Washington State tries to do. They go right to D'Angelo Casto and he draws a foul by Sanders Friesen. No great play there. Starting off going to Casto down in the low post. Let's see if that'll be a consistency here throughout the second half. And if Casto can get going, it might take a little pressure off of Thompson and Faisal Aiden, who has not been able to perform well from the floor. Clay Thompson playing all 20 minutes in the first half as Casto can't get that free throw to fall. How about the absence of Reggie Moore from the offense? Only two points on two shots taken in the first half. As Casto knocks down the second free throw, putting the Cougars up three. You're right, you know, Moore kind of struggled against Stanford on offense too. And tonight, really haven't seen much, much of him against the Huskies. That was kind of his breakout game there in the second half. Like we said earlier, Moore's streak of eight straight games and double figures scoring was snapped on Thursday. Sanders Fryson backing down. Casto, no, but using his will to get the offensive rebound, and he draws a foul. I think it's going to be on Abe Lodwick. Lodwick can't believe it. That's going to be his third. We're going to take another look at that clutter down in the low block. You know, Fryson Sanders just had some great position there. Lodwick. Looked like he was able to get free there for the board. Was some body contact though, and I believe that's Lodwick's third foul. Gonna call, saying it was out of bounds, going to stay with California. So the shot clock did reset. That's the third foul on Abe Lodwick. He's going to stay in the ball game. Still haven't seen much of Patrick Simon. Did not play against Stanford. The first game he was not in, he only in for a brief second in the first half. Brandon Smith outside, Powers trying the three, he finally misses. 
Sanders Freising could have gotten called for an over the back, did not. Reggie Moore is going to push. And Capers hasn't really gotten going offensively either. Taking one shot, no points. And you know, the majority of Capers' points really come when he attacks the glass for those offensive reboards. And he's really the true definition of hustle player with his points. The highlight reel dunks are what we're accustomed to is Capers right on cue, tries the layup. A little bit of contact there, no call by the officials. Ken Bone again shaking his head, can't believe the call. Cougars up by three, early stages of the second half. Braulio Perez, Riley Corcoran with you. Gutierrez trying to get on the board, gets Thompson in the air, little runner, nothing at all. He's 0 for 9 now from the floor. You know, I don't recall the last time I've seen Gutierrez play so rattled and so inconsistent. Lodwick now 0 for 5 from 3. He shoots 29% coming into this one from beyond the arc. Not helping his cause tonight is Brock Modem's going to come into the game. You'd think for Abe Lodwick, and it is. You know, tough break for Lodwick there, but fortunately the Cougars with Clay Thompson battling for that loose ball, able to get the ball back. Let's see if they can put some points on the board here. Capers inbounds to Moore. So we'll see if Moore and Capers can get going offensively. Reggie Moore, long three, no. Gutierrez with the rebound. Out to Brandon Smith, outlet. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Moore, attacks, and there's going to be a foul called on Reggie Moore. And Moore cannot believe that call, shaking his head in frustration. Looked like it was a clean block. We're going to take another look at the replay here, the drive. Kind of a tic-tac foul call, but looks like he might have gotten him on the arm. Moore can't believe it, but Smith will head to the free throw line, trying to bring the Golden Bears within one. Brandon Smith, 60% from the foul line this year. First one's good. Got the shooter's touch there on that first free throw. The early game in the Pac-10 today, UCLA held off Oregon State 69 to 61. So UCLA moves to nine and three in conference play. In sole possession of second place. 26 to 25 here in Pullman. Just under 18, or just over 18 minutes left in the half. Let's see what kind of offense the Cougars can try and sit up here because clearly the three-point shooting has not been effective. Moore steps in, now gives it to Modem on the right baseline. He misses. Capers and Gutierrez were fighting for it, and the foul is going to be called on Gutierrez. So the terrible day continues. Just Gutierrez's frustrations have got to be at an all-time high, but credit Marcus Capers on that play there. Capers, good position. His phase of is going to come in for Capers. First time here in the second half. To wonder what Coach Montgomery is thinking. It was struggles. And the guy they relied on offensively, good inbounds pass to Brock Modem. Great find, great finish there by Brock Modem. Really a favorite with the crowd here. They'll find any excuse for that Aussie, Aussie, Aussie chant. Shooting 65% from the floor this year. Led the nation in field goal percentage for a couple games early on. What a move! by Jeff Powers, count it and the foul. You know, he is playing with a whole lot of confidence, making his first start. We're gonna take another look at the play here. Gets the ball, drives, foul. Little up and under move, somehow manages to get it up and puts it down for two points. What a play by number 21. And, and Powers leads California with eight of their 27. Remember, Powers had not made a start before today. Free throw attempt is good. And so he, he complete, completes a three-point play, and we're tied. Alan Crabb who? <laughs> I'm sure they still would like him in the game right now. So a complete polar opposite of the game that these two played back on January 13th when they were both in the 80s. Kind of struggled to get in the 70s today. Trying to find Modem. Modem on Sanders. Fryson goes up. And Modem definitely doesn't have the pounds to match Sanders. Fryson goes up anyway with the lay-in. Great move by Brock Modem. Really coming in strong with four points here so far in the second half. Side note, Gutierrez picked up his third foul a few possessions ago. He goes up and misses. Now he's 0 for 10. Casto, a block party down low. That's his second. Great play there by D'Angelo Casto. Let's take a look at it one more time. Going up strong, can't get it. Casto there with the SWAT. Nice defensive play by Casto. 
Cougars up 30 to 28. We approach the first media timeout in the second half. Clay Thompson still struggling by his standards offensively. They get it inside to Castro. Good dish to Modem. Bad pass, but fighting for it and pulling it down is Sanders Friesen. To Brandon Smith now. No numbers for California. Modem looked like he might have been able to go strong there, try to force the ball, and let's see if California can take advantage, tie this game up, or take their first lead of the second half. No one's out of bounds. Washington State's going to have possession. Coach Montgomery would like his team to work the offense a little bit more. D'Angelo Casto, he's playing really hard aggressively on both ends of the floor. You know, he is offense, defense. He'll get down there with that good position. Then even when he looks to be beat, he'll fly up in the air and swat the ball away on defense. Cougars up by two. Trying to extend their lead. Clay Thompson going to drive. Shuffled his feet a little bit, finds Reggie Moore on the left side, and he makes the three-pointer. Watch him stay with a little five-point lead now. Some string music for Reggie Moore. Nice play by the kid from Seattle. Five-point lead, like you mentioned, for the Cougars, 33 to 28. Moore shooting 37% from beyond the arc as Murray's going to try the three. That was way long, but Sanders Friesen's there. Puts the ball on the floor, and he regrets that move. They're going to call it jump ball. It's going to stay with California when we come back from a timeout. Washington State, it's a little bit of a cushion now. They're up by five. We'll take a break and be back here on WSUCougars.com. <laughs> 